OK. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Rock Shop with Ralph. We are live in the flesh. <laughs> I just got to make sure that we're live and we are. Yes. Uh, welcome to the Rock Shop with Ralph, your source for all things entertainment. Tonight on the show, we have former lead singer of Great White, current lead singer of XYZ Always, and solo artist, Terry Elo. Elous, Elous. Elous. Um, Elous, yeah. Uh, I say it the Italian way, Elous. But Terry Elous, welcome to the show, Terry. How are you? So, Ralph, I'm going to try to get your accent, and you're going to try to get mine, okay? Yes. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Huh? <laughs> What's up? Yo, what's up? Forget it. No, no, no. We gotta, we're gonna start off. We're gonna say, forget, forget about, about it. it. Forget about it. There you go. Forget about it. Yo, yo. Hey, Vinny, what's up? <laughs> That's good. That's good. You yeah, we. You want to hear a story? When I came to America the very first time, my buddy took me to New York, and we went to the to, to Brooklyn, you know, and um, we had a. He was driving a nice Cadillac, you know, and so we're driving in the caddy. And I'm like, wow, this is so beautiful here and everything. And there was a group of people. So I rolled down my window. I'm like, hey, yo, Vinny. And everybody turned around. <laughs> oh, Vinny. See, why do you think that all the Italians are named Vinny? I don't know. What's up with that? They only have one name? <laughs> that is Guido. Guido. Oh, oh, you're a funny guy. You really are a funny guy, Terry. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, listen, I got three boys. Their names are Dominic, Anthony, and Salvatore. You think those, oh, that's Salvatore, an Italian name? Salvatore, yeah. Salvatore Guido, right? <laughs> no, no. Salvatore Ralph. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dominic, Dominic, Anthony, Anthony, Michael, and Salvatore Ralph. Yeah, a lot of Italians are named Anthony. Tony, Anthony, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you. Do you know why a lot of Italians are named Tony? No. Because what happened was when they were coming from Italy, they yeah. didn't speak English. So yeah. they put a they put a sign on their shirt that said to New York. So when they came off the boat, they went, All right, Tony, Tony, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Is it true? It's a joke, Terry. It's a joke. <laughs> Yo, Tony, yeah, yeah. Oh, to New York, to New York, Tony. But um, thank you very much for coming on. I tell you, I'm a huge fan of yours, Terry. Thank you. Oh. Hello. Oh, hey, hey, hey Jim, I gotta call you back. I got Terry Loose on the on the live interview right now. Go to the rock shop with Ralph. He's live. Call me back. Call me back. Say hi to Terry Loose. Uh, he hung up. All right, whatever. Yeah, he's like, anyway. Uh, that was Jim Crean, who's a friend of the show. He sings for the Apathy Brothers. Great guy. Um, oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure uh, you know him. He has a lot of lot of people on his albums. But anyway, uh, it's great to have you. We're going to talk about your career, starting with XYZ um, and the current band that you're in and the previous bands that you in, and some little things that I know about you that some people probably don't know about you because I do my research, Terry. Good. But yes, so um, you're located, you're in Los Angeles now? Yeah, I've been in Los Angeles ever since. My very first time, I, when I first came to America, I... We went to New York, Pat and I, but it was too cold, and we used to live in. So we used to live in a car, and we didn't have. We had a 1974, I believe, a Chevy station wagon, and um, we used to go and pick up the chicks in order to to sleep somewhere. So the funny thing, we used to go to that the the cat club Le Mans. We used to go to Le Mans or the the cat club Le Mans, whatever, and um, we used to go him and I pick up the chicks, and you know, of course, we were semi successful at it, and. Uh, and they would, I would say, well, let's go to our place. And they would say, okay, great. And our car was parked right in front of the club. So they were like, welcome to the place. <laughs> they were like, really? That's where you live? That's where it is? And eventually the car got towed because we got too many tickets. So we went, ah. we went to Los Angeles. And that was what, a Buick Estate Wagon? It was a Buick, yeah. A Buick 1974 Buick, yeah. <laughs> it was actually well, a, Buick, a Buick. I think it was a Buick Estate or something like that. Yeah, that's what I said, a Buick Estate Wagon. Yeah, uh, yeah, wagon, yeah. Yeah, oh. Um, bonjour, comment allez-vous? Très bien, merci. 
Yeah, you know, okay, good. See, I speak a little bit of French. That was in high school. Yeah. And then the, the only thing I really learned how to do in French was French kiss. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I, I'm sure you're good at it. Uh, you know, <laughs> yes. You, you get married and everything, so you get successful at it. Yes. But anyway, let's talk about XYZ, Terry. Okay? okay. That's where I first got my first taste of Terry. Um, You guys were the epitome of the late 80s hard rock scene. I mean, um, Here's what I want to say about Terry and XYZ. They were known as the house band of the whiskey, correct? Very true. There was only three bands. And I was going to prove this point. I don't want to interrupt you because I want to I want to show the scope of that band. There was yeah. only three bands that could say they were the house band of the whiskey. And yeah. listen to these bands. The Doors, yeah. Motley Crue, yeah. and XYZ. True. Okay? You got to have some big, I don't want to say a Sp a Spanish words, cojones, cojones to, to be the house band at, at the whiskey. Now, you want to talk about that a little bit, Terry? Thanks. Yeah. Uh, what happened is Mario, <clears throat> who used to own the whiskey, the Roxy, the Rainbow, Mario used to manage the band. And um, he liked us very much because we were, I guess we were, I think we're good people. So he used to like us a lot, and we, we were selling out the whiskey, the Rock Seal. And one day he said, uh, I want to manage you guys, him and Lou Adler. Lou Adler used to manage uh, Chi Chin Chan and a bunch of other people on the Roxy. And uh, they decided to um, to manage us. So the deal was we had to do the whiskey once or twice a month. And uh, I up twice a month, and we were, they were feeding us pizza and giving us a little bit of money. And uh, in exchange, we had the name right in front of the whiskey, the huge name. Instead of the whiskey, it used to be called XYZ. And people used to call it the XYZ Club for the longest oh, time. Because of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we used to see all the bands. They used to come and say, hey, let's go to the XYZ place. And now it's the whiskey, you know, but, you know, so. Right. And now there was, uh, you, you guys, you guys were, were selling out the whiskey constantly. Okay. Um. All, all the time, I, I think it had to do with uh, a lot had to do with your looks. <laughs> Obvious, <laughs> obviously, the girls. Well, well, let me ask you this: Give me a percentage. How, what was the percentage of, of guys and girls that came to see an XYZ show? About 70, 30, 70 percent girls. Yeah. Ah, okay. There you go. Um, yeah. So there was sort of like a, a bidding war for you guys, and you guys wind up signing to Enigma Capital. Yeah. Um, for a lot of money. Excuse me. For a lot of money. Really? So you yeah. want to tell us how much? Uh, well, with the deal and everything was close to a million dollar back then. It was uh, wow. actually that's about three million dollars. So, um, but what I, the problem with X Y Z is actually not a problem. There was no problem. The, we had a wonderful time and a wonderful run. We just got signed when it was pretty much over. The scene was over. Uh, by the time we released the first album. Nirvana was already in, yeah, and Soundgarden. All those guys were kicking butt. And by the time we released the album, although KNC used to play the heck out of us, and we were number one on KNC, your powered radio, all that stuff, it wasn't really too late. We should have, we should have been signed uh, just earlier, to us, like earlier, like a warrant and 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 poison, and all that stuff. So we couldn't. Unfortunately, we were too late, but. Um, it's okay because I had a great time and that allowed me to do other things in life. You know, life is really, it's an interesting uh, journey. Um, I mean, you have to appreciate the journey when you were, you know, and there's so many different, it's like a tree, you look at a tree and there's so many different branches. And sometimes you take a branch, you look at the branch on the right and sometimes you look at the branch on the left and it takes you somewhere else, different flowers, different leaves. Well, that's what happened to us, you know, in life, we went right and left and, we had a great time. I see a lot of people wanted to ask question. Question. Yeah, well, that's Sharon. Sharon's just she's commenting. She's saying, uh, you know, uh, talking about the whiskey. Sharon, do you have a question? K and A C. That's yeah. Sharon Wildell. Yeah, she wants to ask a question. Go ahead, Sharon. Well, um, she's just commenting about K and A C and and uh, uh, the whiskey, pizza, bathroom, sex, everything. That's what she wrote. <laughs> yeah, we we. It was, you know, the, the, those who, who, who have lived, who have lived that period of time, I think it's the last time rock bands and fans really had a great time, I would say. Um, um, 
it's changed a lot. After that, Nirvana came in and everything was somber, sad, and then everything's changed. The music wasn't as, as fun anymore. And I remember I quit doing the music scene for a long time because I really didn't have much fun. It was boring, you know. Well, let, let's get let's get back to let's get back to when when uh, X Y Z was signed. You were saying you guys got close to a million dollars. What's the first thing you go out and buy? I didn't buy anything special. I think the when I think I uh, bought food, put money in my put food in my fridge, and and that's it. We we're pretty frugal. We didn't, uh, you know, when you have a deal for a million dollars, you don't have that money in your pocket. It's all in a trust account where you have to, um, the label says, okay, uh, the producer's going to get that much money. Um, uh, the studio's going to get that much money. So re you really don't have anything in your hands, you know? Ah. No, but we, we, we had a, um, a trust account and we, we were able to buy food all the time. And uh, that's what we did. We were, before that, let's face it, um, we made we survived on donation. The f the fans were fantastic. They were they used to come every Fridays and Saturdays at our place. We used to have a party, and fans used to fill up the fridge. Seriously, there, there was wow. Yeah, if was if it wasn't for the fans, we, we would have never made it. I mean, literally, we were starving, and they were so kind to to bring us food. Um, I, 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 um it was it was really nice. I mean. So many of these girls and these guys, I should I still talk to them once in a while. They say, hey, remember me? I'm like, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm grateful for them. Very grateful. Wow. I got I got them the first two questions. I got a question from Clint McLean. Oh. He wants to know, will you please do more? Well, it's a statement. Will you please do more acoustic albums? Oh, Clint, you, thank you. Uh, I'm actually just about to release a new album, a bunch of new, new songs. Honestly, Clint, I have recorded during the pandemic until now about 15 to 20 songs wow and they're ready to go it's just um every time i'm about to release something i get sidetracked and so i don't release them but toward the end of the year i have a lot of things going on i have songs um uh, uh i have an album coming up uh, for frontiers record i have a uh, an acoustic album i have songs i have written with uh jackie northrop i have songs written for xyz and this is uh, starting now. September is going to be a busy year, busy time of the uh, the year for me. So, Clint, awesome. yeah, you'll have something coming up soon. There you go. And Sharon wants to know how long was the whiskey run? How long did you play the whiskey for? We had to play Sharon. We had to play the whiskey um, pretty much twice a month for I would say a year, year and a half until we get signed. The, once we get signed, everybody wants to, to to know where are you going to celebrate. A, we decided to play the whiskey three nights in a row and sell out three nights in a row. Um, we were very loyal and faithful to Mario and grateful for his generosity. And uh, just, uh, you know, I get signed by uh, um, uh, an Italian, my good friend Pino Bavaresi. Uh, it, it's from uh, uh, in Italy. He's the one who got me the rec who helped me get the record deal. So I owe a lot of things to the Italian. See that? All right. And we, we're not only good for. Well, we taught the world how to eat, of course, because we yeah. love food. Ooh, most yeah. people eat. Most people eat to live. Italians live to eat, and mm. we know we know soccer. Our culture is great. But anyway, here's a question I have for you. This is from me, by the way. Hello, uh, Sal Dalia, Kenny Kessel's watching from the Metal Voice, um, and Bill Saint Pierre. Hello, guys. Okay. I, I always I always say hello. <laughs> here's here's a question I got for you. I heard there was a major major rock star that convinced you to become a lead singer? There was a, yeah, there was a lot of people uh, who, I didn't want to be, um, I, I wanted, I didn't want to be a rock singer. This is the truth. I wanted to be um, a crooner like Tom Jones and, uh, and um, uh, I wanted to be more like Tony. Frankie Valley. Yeah, maybe not Frankie Valley. I was, he was not my idol, but although I respect him, yeah. I was going to Tony Bennett. Uh, ah. I don't know if you know all those guys. I was more crooner, Frank Sinatra. Sinatra. I yeah, I was into that. I was not into rock, but I mean, nobody wanted to, to sign a, a singer to do Frank Sinatra. So I went into rock, you know? Right. Yeah. And you, were, you, you and Pat were in France, right? Back and then yeah, grew up together. Yeah. Well, let me get, let me give a shout out to, to the band, uh, you know, current band. 
It's yeah. uh, you. It's still Pat La Pat Fontaine. I always say Pat LaFontaine because no. La he's the <laughs> hockey player. Um, yeah. Yes. From New York. From the, uh, that's right. Uh, Tony Marcus, yes. your guitarist. Yeah. And Joey Shapiro is the drummer. Hey, guys. Hey guys. Just want to give you guys a current. That's the current. That's the current lineup of X Y Z. And Jeez. current, you guys have been together since forever. Since 1990. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Same, but same, um, I'm sorry. Same lineup since since 1990. Same lineup, correct. That's what I'm saying. You guys have been together forever. But um, here, here's the thing, and, and it seems to be a current theme with the get a lot of the guests that I have. You guys always not you guys not everyone, but a lot of them. You come out with the first album in the late '80s. You guys are out like gangbusters, and then of course Nirvana hit, and you got screwed on. The, you get screwed on the second album. You wind up losing your record deal, or 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 getting dropped, or what, however it was. And I can give you the bands. Uh, Badlands. I had Greg Chase on on here with Eric Singer, Eric Singer drummer, Greg Chase on bass player, Jakey e. Lee guitarist, Ray Gillen of all people, phenomenal singer, and they you know they get fall by the wayside. Hardline, Johnny Gioelli, same thing. Neil Sean on guitar. The grunge hits and you guys get screwed. So you got, and I got to say this, when you guys came, first off, uh, for people that don't know, XYZ's debut album was produced by Don Dockin. Um, Here's a question I have for you. And this is me as the fan, uh, Terry. Uh, I remember reading in Metal Edge magazine that you guys on the second album didn't want to have Don Dockin because all he did was sit around and drink wine. <laughs> See that? I remember reading that. Don now he was now just I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um he was was gonna do the second album, but read that quote and decided not to do it. Is there any truth to that? I don't honestly, I don't recall. I don't know if it's true or not. I don't know. It's such a long time ago. Um I enjoyed working with Don. In fact, I just texted him the other day, uh, two or three days ago. I enjoyed working with him. Um, of course, we had, like everybody else, like producers, artists. We had some ups and downs. But overall, um, I learned a lot from him. Overall, I think Don is – I, I have the, the highest respect for Don. He's a very um, talented guy. He's, he's a great singer and, and, and really good songwriter. And um, – He's getting a lot of bad press lately, and I kind of kind of pissed me off. I don't think he deserves that. People don't realize that getting older is not easy. You oh, know? I know. You're saying as far as the singing. Yeah, yeah, as far as the singing. You know what? I have the utmost respect for him. He still goes on stage and perform. And I, Don doesn't – I don't think he does it for the money. He's comfortable money-wise. He does it because he loves to play. He does it right. because he's a true artist, and people should – should say, hey, you know what? It is what it is, and is there for you. And please be respectful. Uh, and I have the utmost respect for Don. Um, I, in fact, I just sent him the other day a message, and he replied. He said, "Oh, great vocals on your stuff." And I said, "I had great teachers, you being one of them." And that's what I said to him. I, you know, I, I always respected Don Dark, and I think um, people forget, but he's he's a great songwriter, great songwriter. So. I Yes, I, I agree with you 100%. And one thing I got to say is you, you seem to be one of the real nice guys in the music business. I know everything that I've seen or heard from you, you never say a bad word about anybody. Because, I guess it's... You know, Ralph, there's no sense talking bad about people when they're not around. I'm a martial artist, okay? If you piss me off, I'm going to hurt you. But that's my attitude. But I will do that in front of you. I will not talk bad about people about a band or somebody, I would just ignore them. I would just say, eh, whatever. You know what I mean? Life is too short to say bad things about people. Let's talk about the positiveness. Let's talk about good things in life, about the fact that we're still here and alive, enjoying music, enjoying this interview. The fans, I can see the message right there. Clint, yeah. the message. Joyce, Rosalie, all these people. You know what? You should be grateful. We should be grateful to do what we do, fans and artists. So what? Still talk about the negative. There's nothing. I only want to talk about the positive. Really, yeah. for me, it's just we only here for a little while. You know, we, right. we don't, how many years do we have? How many years can I sing? How many years are you gonna be alive, buddy? You don't know. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I wish you the best, of course. But my point is, let's be positive and let's be grateful. Yes. That's 
Absolutely. And I tell this to my kids too all the time. You can compliment as much as you criticize people. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So if you're going to criticize people, you can compliment them just as much. So that's what I say. You're absolutely right. Anyway, I got to say hello to some people because they're coming in the droves for you, Terry. Uh, a, a, a mutual friend of ours, Mari Feldman, says, hey, Terry, you're the best. Nah. Mari Raquel. Thank you. <laughs> um, he's the kindest. Um, Doc Paula Lark, who's uh, affiliated with Richie Scarlett. How you doing, Doc Paula? She says, wish you hadn't played the fair. The only group I wanted to see. Joyce Roselli, you, which you mentioned, she said, you're such a sweet, real man. Um, you know, they're coming in all over. I'm trying to get everybody, but uh, I want to ask Terry some questions, and we're going to keep moving along. I'll say them as they go. Hello to everybody. How you um, doing? How you doing? Forget about it. Now, you, how are you doing? I'm going to have Terry saying how you doing the right way by the time it's over. Oh, yeah. All right? By the time I'm this interview is over, I'm not Terry's – he's gonna have a, a, a rope chain with an Italian cross, and he's gonna be saying, "Hey, forget about it. How you doing?" <laughs> but Terry, I gotta, t yeah, yeah, right. I gotta tell you, when you guys came out with the, the second album, "Hungry," um, "Face Down in the Gutter" had to be one of my favorite, favorite songs of that era, and it was the epitome of the, however you want to call it. Hair, I'm not gonna, and I hate to use the term. I'm only trying to say some hair metal, cock rock, whatever you want to call it. Face down to the gutter. That video has to be the epitome of it. It was like the peak of the, the the hair metal era, and it was just ready to tip over and fall off. You know what I mean? But what a great song that was, Terry. What a great effing song that was. And coincidentally, you switched to Neil Kernan as the producer. Who wound up producing Don Dokken? <laughs> Neil Carter. Okay. Neil is a great producer. We just yeah. uh, didn't see eye to eye. We ended up working back with uh, George Tucko. But Neil is a fantastic producer. I mean, we, we just wanted to go back to our thing to be a, nothing to do with Neil. Neil, I really respect him so much. Honestly, we wanted to go back to George Tucko, who was our mentor. We wanted to go back to him. He did and, the uh, first one, right? Yeah. Well, George Tucko did all the demos, yeah. and, and then when we, it was time to get signed, record companies said, no, no, you cannot use George Tucko, God bless him. You have to use uh, somebody else. So we had the choice between Paul Stanley and, and, um, and Dawkins. So we told George, he said, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to work with you. He was crushed, but he understood it was business, but he was crushed. So the second album came out, and immediately I said, I am working with um george Tucker. why because he was my mentor and he helped me get a record deal so i wanted to to pay it forward and 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 be the be the good guy you know what i mean so, right. so i mean you know face down in the garden was written and i'll tell you what happened you need to know the story behind face down in the garden and i'm gonna name somebody my good friend paul monroe the drama for a great for xyz paul wanted to at the time, we had so many porn stars around the band. A lot of we were surrounded by strippers and porn debauchery. Yeah. That's what we want to hear, Terry. We want to hear about the debauchery. Well, we had like so many. I mean, you have to realize that when our main backer, financial backer, was an Italian. No, he was actually Israeli. <laughs> uh, he was the biggest. He was the biggest um, pornographer at the time. He was really well known, and uh, God bless him. I still talk to him once in a while. Uh, Norman was the biggest guy at the time, and he, we were surrounded by 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 those girls, uh, which with those girls, it was wonderful, you know. But you know, anyway, long story short, even Pat was dating uh, Tony Wells and all that stuff, you know. Anyway, long story short, Paul definitely wanted to go out with a girl named um, Gina Fine. And she was hot and she was a nice girl and she used to hang with us and everything. So he wanted to impress her. He was so dedicated to that. So he started drinking and drinking and drinking and drinking. He's like, yeah, I'm going to get her. Yeah, I'm drinking one more. He wanted to take his, make sure he could do it. And he got so wasted, it never happened. She wanted to do it, but he couldn't do it. And he ended up, we outside, when I remember for a while, was outside. He was drunk and he was face down in the garden. So that's the story with uh, Paul Monroe, because I know he's going to listen to this interview, and I know he's going to say, brother, you forgot about me. <laughs> so, <no. laughs> 
But um, yeah, Terry, they're really coming in here. I'm trying to get everybody all the questions. Uh, Go ahead. Know, mostly, I... comp mostly compliments for you. Uh, you know, uh, bring X Y Z to Florida. I love. Uh, yeah, I see. I see Bernie. I see Joyce. I see. Yeah, you can see him. Yeah, see the whole X Y Z tour. I see a bunch of questions. Yeah. Um, but I got a question for you. Um, you guys, I keep. I'm, I got. I got to stop saying um. That's one thing I got to do. I got to stop stop saying um. But I I still do it anyway. X Y Z toured with, um, Ozzy, right? Ozzy Foreigner, Alice Cooper. Foreigner, Alice Cooper. Got you got some insights on those tours? How were they? Being a relatively new band and going out on tour with like some of these major major acts. We had some great stories, but they were all. I think overall, all the stories I have. I tend to keep all the good memories. I tr I try to forget the bad things, and uh, we we learned a lot from everyone. Ted Nugent, you know, Mick Jones from Foreigner. Uh, I don't have any anything. All my stories are very positive, and uh, well, yeah, that's what I mean. I'm, I'm not saying to, to yeah. give any any bad insight. You know, if you have one of my best moments, I would say, is the day we we, we did Cobble Hall with Ted Nugent for New Year's Eve, and it was just before midnight. And we were done playing, and we did our set. And um, the management, uh, Doug, and Ted says, "Magic," I said, "Well, you need to do one more song." So Ted is not ready yet, and we had no more songs because we didn't rehearse any more songs. So I, I and Mark had his guitar. We, our role need to kill the guitars, everything away. So I got on stage and I did by myself um, uh, after the rain. And you have to realize. There was a rock and roll show, you know, and we had about 15,000 people at Cobo Hall and it was sold out. And I did that moment and everybody was using a lighter. Everybody was screaming and chanting for us. Was Before it the cell phones. Everybody yeah. uses cell phones now, Before right? Light. And it was an amazing moment because I, I sang, I think I sang pretty well. At least I sang from here. I don't know if it was pretty well, but it was from here. And I will never forget that moment. I was, it was an amazing, amazing moment uh, to see the fans really enjoying the moment. We hear entertainer. Entertainers are here to entertain the fans. We're here to, to please the fans. And when we see the result, and the result is good, God, what's, what a great feeling. Right. What Better than any drug in the world. Well, yeah. I, I'm not into drugs. Yet. I've never been into drugs anyway. Well, I mean, the rush you get, I mean, you know, better than any drug in the world. Yeah, yeah. Here's, here's some things that, that maybe people don't know about Terry. Um, after XYZ broke up, Terry is a, is a renowned session singer and songwriter. Okay. He's also a ghost writer where if a band has a problem writing songs, Terry comes in and he may slip them a song and the band takes credit for it. Sort of like with one of my favorite bands, Kiss, there was plenty of people that played on their albums, wrote on their albums, you know, and they don't get credit for it. Yeah. So here's a question I want to ask you, and if it's possible, is there anything, little insights you can give on some of the songs that you did, Terry? Come on, buddy. No, you can't. You, you can't you tell. Signed, you signed a, uh, 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 um, uh, an agreement and you don't, I don't want to get sued or anything. Let's just say that I sang on a lot of records. I did a ghost, sang a lot of records, and I did a lot of uh, – you know, um, songwriting and some of some of the parts uh, I wrote. You know, I didn't get the credit. But I was getting money. You know, uh, you know, here's a sandwich. No, it's good. You know, no. But I was, I was, I was compensated okay. And uh, I, I don't. I'm, I'm glad I was able to do that, and I did it for a long time. And then after that, I quit. You know, in the '90s, I quit the music business. I was no longer in the music business. You know. So what were you doing? I was working for the mob. I was going to say, my cousin told me he had a guy named Terry with jet black hair that spoke in a funny accent that, that he did some work with. Was that you? I let's just say that, <laughs> let's just say that I, I came across, I was working as a bartender at, at a uh, really well-known nightclub, and um, I came across the possibility of – Owning the club and being part of a, a, the a, in a different world and uh, oh that's yeah and I I I, I, I almost did it uh, but I got scared and <laughs> uh, 
and somebody in my family, let's just say that somebody in my family um, was very connected, let's just say that, and got me out of it. And uh, I just went on and go back to music. But I really enjoyed, for, for, for many years, I was no longer in the music business. I was working um, at a nightclub and um, it was a different life, lifestyle for me, completely different lifestyle. I, I don't regret it. In fact, I learned a lot. I built character, you know. I mean, so um, yeah. I I got you. I didn't know that. Um, just so pe fans want to know, um, and Terry can shake his head yes or no, maybe. Here's some of the bands that I did some research that I I'm pretty sure he worked with. Um, ACDC, Guns N' Roses, Stevie Wonder, um, Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey, is that true? I oh, can't say anything. Um, maybe, maybe not, but I think it's true. He's he's smiling, but um, he, that's fine. He doesn't want to get sued, and we respectfully we respect his his silence. But just to give you a general idea that the man in front of me is super talented. I don't have to tell you this; you, we all know it. But how talented he is that these people call him and they want to work with him. Um, you know, Terry's a great, and, and his attitude is is great. I mean, you know. You, you, you meet some of these people and they're total assholes. I and mean, we can tell you're not an asshole. <laughs> I mean that in the utmost respect, Terry. No, I, I worked with some great people. And it, every time I work with as a new artist, whether I do backup vocals, I used to work with Eddie Money. In fact, Eddie Money just passed, was in his anniversary yesterday. And uh, he's I, from, I'm sorry, I'm, I interrupted you. Long Island. Ten, ten minute, actually, he grew up in Queens, 10 minutes from where I grew up. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, he moved to Long Island. Yeah, he moved to Long knew, Island afterwards. I knew him pretty well because we we used to work together. Uh, I have a funny story. We were doing backup vocals. I was doing backup vocals for him for a, a tour we, we did, and uh, he used to call me Frenchie. He was like, hey. So one day we're, we're doing the show, and we had a, a strings of shows in, in a, a, like around Rhode Island and, and all that stuff for a, a, an event called Rock for Christmas, which I will do again this year. In fact, Wayne just sent me an email a few minutes ago and said, uh, "Terry, you want to do uh, you want to do Rock for Christmas again?" Say, "Yeah, I'll do it." You know. So anyway, it's helping kids, donating the time, and everything's great. Anyway, long story short, Eddie was doing it, and I used to to do all the backup vocals for him and everything. And and the, and the funny thing is, I remember the very morning where we partied all night, and I don't do drugs or anything. You but know, Eddie, Eddie could party. I'm not gonna say anything about whomever. Yeah, you know, yeah. So we're at the airport. It's about ten in the morning, and and Eddie Eddie Money's like, "Hey, yo, Terry, you know, come here, have a drink with me." You know, I'm like, hey, "Yo, Eddie, it's ten o'clock in the morning. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, dude, it's late. I gotta catch up. <laughs> I gotta catch up." <laughs> Eddie was that way. I seen him one time, you know, and like I said, I, I idolized him growing up because he was like ten minutes. He's older than me, obviously. Ten minutes from my house, he was like, and he was a police officer, you know. Um, he was the, like the local guy that made good. So I would go and see him wherever. And I saw him at a place out here where I lived and he goes, how am I singing? How am I doing? He goes, you know, six rehabs later, I'm doing pretty good. You know, he would say stuff like that. He didn't care. He was always just like me up front, honest about everything. And what a great guy. And anytime he did an interview, cause I know people that he's done interviews with, he would bring like 10 pizza pies with him. And he would bring him out and treat everybody to pizza. That's the kind of guy that Eddie was. Rest in peace, Eddie. We love you. You know what I learned from Eddie Money? And this is something I told you. Every time I work with an artist, I learned something from him. First of all, Eddie was very generous of his time and, and helping others. One thing I learned from him is we were doing a show in, uh, I think, Rhode Island. or It was a cold night. Plymouth. Plymouth uh, somewhere. And it was really cold. There were not too many people showed up and everything, you know. And... There was only a few fans, maybe 20 fans, you know, waiting to get an autograph. So I was sitting next to him, you know, signing some stuff. And I looked at him, I'm thinking, this is Eddie Money who sold 27 million albums, you know. Right. And here is in the cold, waiting for each person to come. And he says, hey, are you doing? I'm Eddie Money, you know, it's my turn. And he signed an autograph and everything. You know what? That touched me because he showed that he was very generous with his time. He, too, he talked to each and every one of his fans. And not too many bands do that. I have worked with bands, which I'm not going to say whom, right. but I've worked with bands who don't do that. They have a line of hundreds of people waiting, and they're like, 
Yeah, I got to go. I got a girl waiting for me, you know. I'm like, no, man, the fans are more important. The reason you're here is because of them, not that girl. But they don't get that. But I was touched by Eddie's attitude. And that's one thing, you know, the fact that he was a great songwriter, that's something that touched me very much about him. Taught me, you know. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. One, one of my one of my heroes. And another one I can say, I'll give you three words. Ronnie James Dio. He was the yes. same exact way. Ronnie same, was the same way. Ronnie same way. When I, I met Ronnie, Ronnie was really nice and, and, and he was so kind to me. I was didn't even have a record deal at the time. I was just on the verge. And he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I heard about you. You know, you're getting somewhere. You know, you're going somewhere. I'm like, yeah. He's like, good luck, man. Good luck. Well, yeah, was, what a, what a so, great guy. And it was like, yeah, man, he's shorter than me. I like him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, right there, Bernie Mahoney, Mahoney says, Terry, great job on singing at the Dio Tribute. Thanks. I mean, you got fans coming from all over, Terry. You're well loved. But Ronnie oh. was the best, for me, the best heavy metal singer of all time. All time. Hands, hands down. Hands down. Hands down. It's Ronnie Dio. There's a lot and, of great singers, but nothing like Eddie, like uh, like uh, Ronnie Dio. Nothing. And, and as as a singer, you know, you I don't know if you need to warm your voice up. He never warmed up. He well, was I, just. I got a story with him. I said, hey, we we're backstage somewhere. I said, hey, Ronnie, how'd you warm up? He smoked, yeah. You think I'm gonna go and sing now? And I'm like, <laughs> really? I mean, Ronnie was the best, dude. I mean, and, and you know, I just found out that he smoked pot because I interviewed, I interviewed his drummer Vinny Apice. I interviewed uh, people that played with him, and they were like, "Yeah," and me, I, you would think no, but yeah. Hey, listen, to each his own. But he smoked, but he never, ever, ever warmed up. He would just go on stage and belt it out. You know, I, one, of, I, one of the two I, nice I kind of do that too. You know, I gotta be honest with you. I I don't. I warm up a little bit more now because I'm older, and I warm up a little bit. Oh no 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 no! Like two minutes, and I'm like, yeah, screw that. Let's go and sing. You know, and um, I, I I see singers like warming up for like thirty minutes in the shower, then thirty minutes before the show. And I'm like, by the time you get there, you're tired. You know, it's like you know, masturbating before sex. You know, what's it? What's what's the, what's the thing? You know what I mean? So. Awesome. I got Mitch Lafon. Hey, Mitch, what's up, buddy? Mitch Lafon from the Rock Talker. Mitch Lafon, he's watching. Oh, my See, God, they're, all, they're all watching my show now, uh, Terry. Look at Mitch, that. Mitch, Mitch got some great. He's a guy. I know. Awesome. I had him on my show. So many I interviewed stories. Mitch. Yeah, I love Mitch. Is, is, is he really somewhere? Mitch, how you doing, brother? Yeah, he just said Terry's the best. I can speak. I can speak. Him and I, we do uh, interviews in French. Oh yeah, because he's from Canada, correct? Yeah, he's from Canada. Yeah, Canada. Yeah. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's I'm coming full circle. I just was a a, a huge fan of, of music and passion, and then my shows, you know, little by little, were taken off and was starting to get noticed, and I love it. I mean, I get to meet meet some of my idols and and heroes that I grew up listening to, and it's nothing better, nothing better, my friend. But let's talk about Great White. Um, I said um again. I'm sorry, but. No. Yeah. Here's what I want to say. And I want to say this with the utmost respect to you, Terry, because it takes a lot of, and I said this, it takes a lot of fucking, excuse my language. Somebody just wrote something stupid on here. Anyway, um, it takes a lot of balls to replace pretty much a legend in Jack Russell. I mean, Jack Russell, say what you want about him. The guy's an amazing singer, an amazing front man. They had huge hits. You know, they got... They had some bad publicity from what happened, the incident. And you come in and you take over. No questions asked. Just go in there. This is me. I'm Terry, and I'm singing the way I want to sing. I'm not replacing Jack. I mean, I am replacing Jack, but I'm going to sing the way I want to sing. And you were there for almost 10 years. You put out two great albums, and that was it. It was like you were showing the door. So what are your thoughts on the Great White uh, situation I mean, I'm sure you. They weren't all bad years. I mean, you had you had uh, you had to have some good years, really good years. I know there might have been a little bit of animosity towards the end, but what do you want to say about that, Terry? First, I want to tell you thank you for your comment. I uh, appreciate that. First of all, Jack is a friend of mine, um, and I've always considered great singer. Yeah, I always considered Jack to be a great singer and great. What what I like about Jack specifically. It's like what I like about singers like uh, Don Dawkins or those type of singers. 
they have a sound like Robert Plant. Uh, you would say Robert Plant, you would say uh, uh, all those type of singers. They have a sound. Whether they get the note or not, it doesn't really matter because they sound like them. Like Jack Russell, you know, the Jack, that's Jack Russell right away. So is Don Dark and so is right. Robert. And that's my friend is the, for me, the best thing a singer can be doing is having his own, having his own sound. A lot of great singers out there and I'm not going to put anybody down, but a lot of them have no sound. It's just like they sound like anybody else. And I'm not looking, I'm not impressed. I'm like, yeah, you can get the note. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Okay. But can you, can you sing like Jack Russell or Don Dawkins or Robert Plant or Bruce Dickinson, Rob Alford? Dio, do you have that sound? No, you don't. You sound like anybody else. Now, don't get me wrong. It's, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm, I, I have the utmost respect for all those guys. I just say that Jack has his own sound and I respect that highly. Now, when I moved in, I'll get a phone call and I had two days to learn, actually one day to learn uh, uh, 13 songs, which was, there's no way I can do it. So I did it and I was asked to replace Jack for three shows in a row, which I did. And after that, I was asked to, to do more shows and I did. And I, as you mentioned, uh, the first few years were fantastic and I'm very grateful for, for the band, for the opportunity. Um, very grateful for, um, all those great years and I have nothing bad to say. Um, I just don't like the way I was shown the door pretty much. I don't like that way. Um, I think it's very cowarded. You gotta be a coward not to be able to talk to someone and say, Hey man, it's not working out. Or maybe we can change this. Would you mind changing this or that? You know, I think you gotta negotiate in life, but they never, they just said, you know, see you bye. It's okay. In, in an email, right? In an email, I received an email. In fact, I found out I was fired by reading the news. So, and then I went on my, I went on my email account. I'm like, wait a minute, it's a joke or what? And anyway, but long story short, I, I'm grateful for the great years that I had with those guys. And, uh, I've always liked, uh, Mark and, uh, and I always liked Scotty and Audie. Always liked those three guys. They were great guys. And, uh, we ship the very best. They have a new singer. I'm not, I don't know much about him except, uh, we met a few times and he was kind and, uh, you know, I moved on life. You, you go on. It's like a girlfriend. I moved on and I'm, I'm happy with the, what I'm doing. And, I, here's what I always say, and people always laugh at me sometimes. I said, I'm Terry Illus. I'm not Jack Russell. I'm not Don Dawkins. I'm not Robert Plant. And I don't mean that in a pretentious way. I mean that I'm Terry Illus. I am who I am and who I want to be. And I want to be myself. I don't want to be somebody's uh, clone. And that's why Jack loves me because he said, you know, you're, you sang the song the way you wanted to sing them. You didn't try to become Jack Russell. And I said, no. And brother, you know how much I respect you. I, said, I told him that so many times. I talked to Jack a couple of nights ago. So I have the highest respect for him. And I'm glad he's Jack Russell. And I'm glad to be Terry Lewis. I, I, I'm not a clone. I, it's just like, no, man. I'm, I'm, I don't care if I'm the biggest uh, successful artist in the world. I don't care. I want to be me. And that's, yeah, that's the most important thing for me. It's being me. You know, it's just like, you know. Great White, I wish him the very best. And, um, you know, again, Jack is my friend. I still I talk to him once in a while. And um, I haven't talked to anybody from Great White in, in three years. And, you know, good luck to them, you know. I, I'm inspired to do other things. Here's what I'm going to say. I am an artist. I'm a songwriter. I have written songs for a lot of people. And some of my songs are funky some of my songs are rock some of the songs are whatever i i, I needed something else besides just johnny be good chords three chords I, I needed something else musically i needed to expand do you know what i mean it's just like driving a nice car you drive a, a you drive a i don't know a, a mercedes which is a great car but one day somebody says hey have you ever tried a ferrari and you're like no and you're like wow my god this is an amazing car so what i'm trying to say is I, I wanted to do other things. I was, I did a flamenco album with, with Ruiz Viegas and I did other things. I, I did a funk album, uh, mm -hmm. doing a Christmas album right now. Honestly, I, 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 want, I just want to please myself and not be held back. You know what I mean? 
And what, what happened with the Great White is when I decided to do something else, the band got upset, you know, and I say, screw you. Okay. Right, right. I'll, I'll divulge a little bit into it. What happened was you released a solo album. You came out with the release, and, I, and this has been said in interviews before. I don't want to rehash it. I like to be different, but anyway, we'll we'll, we'll talk about it. Uh, you came out with a solo album. They told you you can't release the solo album because we're putting out an album, and that kind of screwed screwed things up. This is what I got. What I what I thought that what I think that I know happened. You can divulge if you want. That's and it. and they and then they were like they were hurt. They were hurt that you were trying to branch out creativity creativity. Uh, creatively, excuse me, I said the wrong word. Um, and they got mad, and they they went with Mitch Malloy, whose claim to fame is uh, he was in Van Halen for five minutes, um, and they replaced you. What, do you think that's what it was, or do you think that certain things were rumbling there a little bit, and they just saw saw a way out, and that's what they did? Let's just say that somebody in the band was not too fond of me because I'm a songwriter, and that person. You didn't like the fact that the last album I I wrote a lot of your music and a lot of the lyrics, and he didn't like that. So just that person and I didn't get along, and uh, you know uh, I wish him nothing bad. You know, uh, again, really, I, I I I don't. Somebody sent me a message yesterday. Oh my god, did you hear what somebody so and so in Great White said about you? Whatever I said, honestly, I don't care. I mean, I moved on. And I, I wish everybody that, you know, just whatever they want to do, I want to do other things. And it was a great period of my life, Ralph. Yeah. This, it was a great time. I, I met the fans. I met Ty Smith, White Days. He says, you send me. Yeah. But, you can say anything. Yeah, it was a great p- period of my life uh, until toward the end. And it was time to move on. And I, I'm doing other things right now. I'm preparing an album that has nothing to do with the, with the great white and everything. And I'm, and it's exciting, you know. Um, it's time to move on. That's all. I, I got you. I got you. I wanted to just say one last thing, and I'm going to talk about the new stuff. Um, here's what, as a fan of great, I, I've been a fan of Great White since '82. So, I mean, I had Mark Kendall on the show, you know. Uh, but that last album you did, Full Circles, I thought Full Circle, I thought was one of the best albums they've done in a long time. That's why I was shocked when you were gone. And you had Michael Wagner, who I love, produce the album. You know, big time. I thought was a great. Should have been a massive hit. Um, so they were. You were like running on all cylinders, and then they dropped that bombshell. But anyway, you said what you had to say. Yeah, it's I, I respect of, uh, Ralph. It's a matter of songwriting. That last album was. I had a lot to do with writing it and writing, co-writing it. I'm sorry, I didn't mind what I said. And some of the songs were actually written by Jake and Northrop and I. Uh, some of the songs, three of the songs were not even written by Great White. They were written by J.K. Northrop and I, and but we shared the publishing and we shared the the credit, of course. But let's face it, I mean, three of the best songs of that album were written by J.K. and I. Right. I, I've got the demo to prove it. I can see here's the song, you know. But the thing is, I have nothing bad to say about the band. I had a great time. I, I did... I, I think... Um, you reinvented the, the band. You reestablished them. I mean, and, and this is no knock on Great White. I love those guys, and I love the band. Um, you know, what happened, happened. All I'm saying was they got a bad rap. They had to really pull themselves up because of the rap that happened with the station fire. You know, they had bad press. Was, and you went, in, you went in there. Excuse me? That was, the, that was a terrible, I mean, terrible. Yeah, terrible tragedy, you know. Rest, rest in peace, everyone. What I'm saying was... They, they, they had to re- reestablish themselves. You came in, no questions asked. You know, okay, no problem. I'll replace a legend? I'll do it, no problem. And you went in there. You did the best you could with what you had, and that and it, it didn't end so well. But anyway. Who should the best? Again, on. On. no animosity. Yes, yes. No, uh, 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 you know, I have respect for Jack. I have a lot of respect for Jack. He's a buddy of mine. A lot of respect for Mark, for Scotty. A lot of respect for Audi. You know, you know, that's it. You know, I mean. Uh, that's it. And we move on. That's it. Um, I got a couple of questions. Yeah. Um, here we go. Uh, Ty Smith said you can sing anything and make it golden. Uh, I have a question. That's a statement. Non-musicians don't realize how hard it is to keep a group together. The egos, personalities, and creative differences 
work to tear it apart. It's like lightning in a bottle to keep a group together in the long run. Uh, Gary, Gary Martin says you're pure class. Uh, there was a question here I wanted to ask you. He said, he says, uh, we hope there can be shows with Jack Russell's great, great white and XYZ. That would be awesome. I that don't would... know about XYZ and great and Jack Russell, but I, Jack and I probably could happen. Uh, um, uh, you know, but Jack Russell and XYZ, I doubt it. Um, I doubt it. Uh, but, uh, uh, Jack and I, yeah, I love Jack. I did a show with Jack, actually. I did uh, I did two events with Jack, uh, one or two events, I forgot, mm -hmm. for the Masters of Rock last year. Um, we did um, we did an acoustic set, him and I, and um, it was actually the most viewed, let's face it, let's not be pretentious, Jack and I together was the most viewed um, acoustic show, or show that year on the uh, Masters of Rock. So I think we, we beat anybody, everybody. Um, and we, we had fun, you know, I love Jack. Is it, what's not to like about guys? Funny as hell. He's a funny guy. Yeah. Hey, lives on a boat, lives on a boat. That's what he talks. Hey, Terry, you know, let me try to be Terry. Hey, Frenchie, how you doing? You know, so, <laughs> guys, what's not to like about the guys? Great. Yeah. So let's talk about your solo stuff. Now you're out at a great white. Yeah. You came out with an album called hired gun. Yeah. Um, now, from what I get, it was it was demos and songs that you've done for other artists, and you says, you said, okay, I'm gonna put this out. All different styles. It's like a a mixed bag of of everything, you know. Um, and you worked with Marco Mendoza. Yeah, Marco is a buddy, friend, friend friend of the show. He was on the show. Great guy. I'm so happy he's back and he's he's uh, with Journey. Yeah, he deserves it. He's great. Yeah. Um. Any uh, any songs that stick out for you on that album? Yeah, there's a song I I I, I wrote with my friend uh, Jake Northrop and Pat Fontaine um, called uh, just two songs that I really like. Uh, one called "I Want Love" because I think it's very difficult for for an artist uh, like as such as myself to find the right relationship. You know, and once you find that relationship. Uh, you should cherish it. And, and it was very difficult for me to, to be with the right person for many reasons. I mean, I, I did find the right person before, but I kind of blew up those relationships. I was, I was not ready. And it's, uh, it, it takes time to, to be, um, I always believe that if you're lucky, you're going to find that person that's going to, uh, accompany you for the rest of your life or for a little bit, uh, a time. And, and, and not everybody gets that chance. And, um, uh, uh, you know, I hope love is uh, right here for me, and I may have found someone. I don't know, but uh, oh know. wait, wait, hold on a second, hold on a second. You're saying, ladies, I think Terry just said he's off the market. I, 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 the bottom just... line, the bottom line, <laughs> the most important thing. In, what I realize as I'm getting older, the most important thing in this world is is love in general. I mean, uh, love for for somebody else, not for yourself. But in order to love somebody else, you need to. Be, you need to respect yourself and understand, and, and you, you need to love yourself, and then you can love somebody else. You cannot love somebody else if you're not comfortable with yourself, if you have issues. So for many, many years, I tried to deal with those issues in my head and, and that stuff, but as I'm getting older now, thank God I'm, I'm able to, to deal with that, and hopefully I find the right person, which I may have found, I don't know, uh, I just um, I want I want somebody uh, by my side. Cool. I don't want to. I don't want to be with you know somebody. You know, I want to. I want to wake up. I want to wake up with the person that I'm going to bed with. I want to wake up with that person and have a big smile on my face, and not feel guilty. That's what I'm trying to say. I got you, Terry. And by the way, it's funny you're just saying that because my wife just chimed in, and and she number one, she's fascinated with you. I told you that before, before we were on the air. I gave her a whole pass for te for, for Terry Elus. Uh, but anyway, she just wrote, Ralph, you rock. Terry was such a class act. Her name is Joanne. <laughs> well, I just I just believe that, you know, I think a relationship, many of, of, of people listening to us right now realize, and, and the most important thing in this world is having the right person by your side, uh, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, a husband, wife. It's the most, and, and kids, of course. It's the most important thing in the world. I mean, you know, yeah. money, money and everything, you know, it's great, you know, uh, but
But a lot of people don't have much money and they're very happy, you know, and yes. a lot of people have a lot of money, they're miserable. Of course, you can be, you can have a lot of money and be happy as well, you know? Right. Yeah. But uh, my bottom line is, the most important thing is being in a relationship with someone and feel comfortable with that person that you want to wake up in the morning with that person and you're like, oh, this is so cool, you know? It, it, instead of waking up in the morning and feeling, and having the guilty feelings, oh man, you know, you know, I don't want to do that. You know, I'm, I'm glad that I, I, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm lucky in that book, you know. You're lucky, right. Anyway, we got, we got a question from Dan, Dan, and I want to say hello. Hey, Kurt Andrews, how you doing, Kurt? Um, you see, it says, Terry, do you do anything to maintain your voice as you get older? I was so impressed by your raw range and power. Oh, Dan, I, I, I got to be honest with you. No, I don't. Actually, um, uh, the only thing I do is I don't, I don't do alcohol. I don't smoke. Um, I drink a lot of water. And that's about it. I guess it's a, honestly, I don't want to be pretentious, but it's a gift from God. I, I think everybody, you know, it's a gift from God, meaning not to be able to maintain my voice, but I have a voice, which is what everybody's got a gift. Is what I'm trying to say. Everybody's got something, whether you're, you're gifted to, to, to be a painter, you're gifted to be an artist, you're gifted to be a carpenter. You know, my gift from God was to be a singer. Okay. And so I'm, 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 I'm grateful for that. And I don't abuse my voice. When I say that's something I can't sing, like, Remember, I was thinking about when ACDC was looking for a singer, I was thinking about that. I was like, maybe I can, because I had the connections. And I was like, it's not my tone. It's not my style. Uh, you know, um, Axel did a great job, by the way. But, I was going to say, what do you think of Axel? He did a great job. He did a great job. But uh, it's very, it, singing, um, uh, um, the original singer was great, easy. But singing, uh, singing Brian Johnson is difficult because he's got a different technique, and, and, and so from the, he sings uh, head voice, and I don't sing head voice. I, I sing from here, like Dio, which is all power, like Mike Tyson, all power, and it's a very difficult, di different technique, you know. Um, and I was not comfortable with that. I'm like, yeah, he's just gonna kill my voice. And, and I look at Brian Johnson; can he can't even talk to you. when he talk to you? He's like, hey, the way, yeah, you yeah. know. I didn't want to do that. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm going to save my voice. So okay. I know that I don't say I would have had the gig. I don't think that. Right. I just say that I didn't even try because I'm like, nah, nah, no. I got you. Well, let, let me let me ask you this uh, as we're winding this down now. <clears throat> Is, if you could pick anybody in the world, living, not living, to work with, who would that be? Musically or not musically? Musically. Oh, I'd like to work with Mick Jones. Really? Yeah, he's, he's a brilliant songwriter. Uh, I think I could learn a lot from him, Mick Jones. From Foreigner? Yeah, Foreigner. Yeah, I love Mick Jones. I, I did Great a producer, too. Oh, fuck yeah. I'd love to work with Mick Jones. Um, I'd like to work with uh, uh, Joey Bonamassa as a guitar player. I think he's wow. great. Um, and I, I like Sheryl Crow. I love Cheryl Crew. I'm a, one of the biggest fan. I'm like, I have a crush on Cheryl Crew. Ah, um, uh, Cheryl, if you if you if you watch if you're watching this video, please give me a call. Okay, I mean, my, my mom is, you know, I'm just kidding. Uh, I always love Cheryl Crew. I think she's a great singer. And you know, all I wanna do yeah. is have some fun. I like her. I like Bonnie Wright. Uh, as far as band, I'd like to work with George Lynch. You know what? I I can see that, and that was one of the guys I was gonna say. I always thought that you, I mean, crazy. I know, I know my stuff and I always had it in my mind that you worked with him, but you never did. Uh, we, we met years ago. I was about to do a tour and it went sour because I was a difficult period of my time and I was kind of, I was not in the right place. So I'm glad it didn't happen and something happened between him, him and I, and no, so it wasn't pretty. So long, long story short, um, you know, nowadays. I listen to George and I love George. I think he's fantastic. I'd like to work with George. George, I like to work with him and and uh, on drums. Uh, I, so many people I love, you know, so many great musicians, you know, you know. Yeah. And it's funny, it's funny because I, I'm not ashamed to say this. Around the early 90s, around your time when you start, I always got you and only Logan mixed up. 
Oni is a great singer. Yeah, but Oni, I'm saying, right. And I always got you and him confused. I always thought you, you were yeah, each other. Oni is a great singer. He's got that sound and he's, a, he's a really, really good. And he's a buddy of mine. Uh, I love it. I love it. He's funny too. He's, he's a great guy. Uh, I, I think I'd like to work with George. Um, I have, I'm working currently with a friend of mine. Um, Greg uh, D'Angelo. Yeah, Greg D'Angelo is a buddy of mine. I love to, I'm, I'm happy to be working with him. I, I work with Sean McNabb also right now, uh, quite a lot. Former, former great white bass player. Yeah, I work. I, I'd love to work. And Dokken. Yeah, I'd love to work again with uh, Paul Monroe, my, the original drummer for XYZ. I love Paul. Um, I'd love to work with us. Uh, I'm currently working with a great guitar player, Steve Fister, who used to be with Steppenwolf and, uh, and Lino Ford. And I, I, love, I love his playing. It's very uh, subtle. Just he does the right thing when he's supposed to be doing. So many people. I love to work. I'd love to work with Vinnie Apice if we if I do a rock song. I did get Vinnie on. He's been on the show. I can get him for you. Yeah, I know Vinnie well. He's Vinnie. When it comes to rock, is someone I'd like to work with. Um, but you know, honestly, it depends what type of music. I'd love to work with Carlos Santana. It depends what type of music. If you're telling me rock, well, I've got Greg. I'm working with Greg D'Angelo, and I'm happy with that. Uh, but if and guitar player, I'd love to have George. But was, I have Steve, so I'm happy with Steve. But uh, drummer, other other that, I'd like to work with Santana, Carlos Santana. I, I want to have a new album. Yeah, I'd love to work a new album with him with Marco Mendoza. Would be great. I love Marco Mendoza. Um, you know, I, I you learn a lot when you work with someone. It's a learning experience. You learn from them. So. I want to learn more. You know, there's so many things I want to learn, you know. I got you. Um, yeah, let me get back to Greg D'Angelo. He's a Brooklyn boy, by the way. I know. Um, he doesn't talk like you. I know Greg very well. We talk every yeah. day. Tell yeah. him to call me, please, because he's supposed to call, He's supposed to message me. And anyway, I'm not going to get into the whole thing. No, he's, no, supposed I mean, to, he's supposed to call me back, and he never did. Make sure you tell no, him. I know Greg very, very well. Call we Ralph back. Every day, every day. You see, we work, we have One a of my favorite drummers of all time. I'm sorry to talk over you. He's a great drummer. He's easy to and he's easy to work with. And there's one thing about I like about him. He's got something here. He's not an idiot. He did other thing. He's a very successful businessman. Him and I have a band together, and he's the other side of me. He's really, um, I, I, I'm, I'm the artist, and I want to do this and this and this. He's really business, and I love. Uh, I love working with him. Oh, my friend Renee is on. Uh, she definitely- yes, Renee. Renee, I was going to tell you. Renee said Terry has God-given talent. Hey, Dominic, what's up? Another, another. Well, he's not Italian, but his name is Dominic. Oh, I know, but he's Italian. Hey, Dominic. That's my boy, Dominic Gonzalez. There goes the neighborhood, Dom. There goes the neighborhood. That's his name of his show. Yeah, no, Dominic is not Italian. Oh man, that is Italian. That is Italian, but that Dominic is Dominic Gonzalez. He's not Italian. Oh, it's okay. He's got the right to be a. Yes, be, uh, he's a uh, great guy. But what, what, what I was going to say is, for those you kiddies who may not know Greg D'Angelo, phenomenal drummer, one of my idols growing up. He was in Anthrax, all the hits on White Lion. He played with, um, most right. recently with Stephen Piercy. Yeah. Uh, great, great drummer, Brooklyn boy. Hey, Greg, if you're watching, call me, buddy. Smart guy, um, Greg. Greg's a smart. Greg is a he's got something here. Yeah, great, great, yeah. awesome drummer. All those white lion hits. That's Greg D'Angelo. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah. So Terry, what do we got coming up? I know we have some tour dates booked uh, with X Y Z. A lot of people are asking you, is there a tour happening with X Y Z? I mean, it's not going to be a tour. It'll be some select dates, correct? We got some dates coming up. We got some things, and uh, I have a lot of dates with uh Greg also uh, coming up and. Um, you know, things have changed right now due to the COVID-19, so it's kind of difficult to predict what's going to happen as far as touring. Uh, I think promoters are a little bit scared. They, they, they're booking you, and then shows get canceled. Right. Um, um, uh, it's kind of difficult right now. Uh, nothing is really solid, uh, and and I'm a little bit scared also, too, to go and do shows, you know. Uh, I went right. to Saturday to see um, a great band, and... Uh, I was wearing a mask. I'm like, nah, I'm not taking any chances, you know. Now, right. do whatever you want. You can wear a mask or not. I'm the sure thing, you know. I'm not going to criticize that. I just want to go out when I go to a club and there's a lot of people. I want to wear a mask, you know what I mean? I have a it's child. Your choice. Yeah, I have a child to raise, you know what I mean? So I'm like, I'm not taking a chance, you know. I got you. 
So I have to well, say. Well, I mean, I, I can't say enough. Anybody have any last questions before Terry says goodbye? Uh, no. Say them now. But um, oh, I mean, see, Terry, my friend Renee said uh, she said Terry is good. By the way, I'm coming to just to let you know, Renee. I am coming to Denver. I'm going to record some songs in Denver. Yeah. Renee, uh, let me see if I can get her in here. Get her. Yeah, she wrote, uh, Terry has the God-given talent. And uh, uh, Denver, yeah, they, are you going to come to Denver? Yeah, yeah. Class? I'm going to be working. I'm working with a, a, a buddy of mine named Rick, and I'm going to do an album for him. And I'm excited about that. Um, he's a great songwriter. And, you know, uh, I'm going to go over there, do four or five songs. And, you know, it's going to be great. Yes. Awesome. Terry, I can't say enough about you, brother. You came as advertised. Uh, I've been a fan forever, and you're exactly as I pictured you. Uh, such hey, a great wait, guy. Wait a minute. How you doing? There hey. you go. All right. No, 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 no. All right. Hey, you see all my pictures up here? Good yes. colors. I see Rocky over there. I see the Sopranos. Uh, yeah. That's my yeah. Apathy up there. Yeah. Um, I, I see that, Rocky. Rocky, that's one of my favorite movies of all time. Oh, dude. It is my favorite Rocky one. It's my all-time favorite movie. That's right. Well, that one there, that picture is Rocky Balboa, which I was number that. six. Uh, the the yeah. sixth one. No, number, that's number six when he's on well, the. Well, I'm sorry. The the picture I have over there, you can't oh, see. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, that's that's Rocky. Yeah, that's the original Rocky poster. Yeah, yeah, but remember, um, Rocky is the best best movie. All the yes. Italians go crazy when they watch Rocky. Like, hey, hey, forget about it. Forget hey, you about can do that. Um. Uh, now, here's what we got to say. There's two things you got to say. Forget about it. Forget about it. And then you say, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Hey, hey, hey. hey. No, 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 no. Not how you doing. There's no G. Oh, uh, but hey. let, me, let me give you my, my, my imitation of an Italian guy from New York. Hey, this is Nunzo. How you doing, man? How you doing? Hey, how you doing? How you doing? You want to live with the juju? Yeah, yeah. You want some? Shit. All right. Forget about it. You got to hey, go see your mama. <laughs> Fucking Terry, you're awesome, man. Yeah, how you doing? And you gotta grab, you gotta hey, grab your crotch a little bit. How you doing, man? Hey, yeah. fuck you. You know, and what? And, and you know what? Fuck you too. You over there. Yeah. <laughs> no, right? but that's the thing. Forget about it can mean a couple of things. Yeah. Forget about it can mean, even like they say in the movie Donnie Brasco. You know, hey, bada, bada bing, bada boom. Bada bing, bada boom. You say to the guy, "Oh, I saw that guy. Forget about it." Like you know. Fuck him. And then you say, yeah. you know, those this this those, those, that that sauce my mother made. Oh, forget about it. It's great. You know, that's, know, that's know. Forget, forget about, about it. it. Forget about it. it. Could be an adjective, an adverb, a noun. They use it all the time for all different meanings. But um, the, the but fans do, do they have the best pizza in New York, or is it? Or, or <laughs> is it bro, but I question. Or is don't, it, even, don't even get me started. It, in Connecticut, somebody, my ex- Connecticut! Connecticut! Yes, my guitar player from XYZ, the original guitar player from XYZ, told me that the best pizza is in New in Connecticut. Listen, I, I'm from Queens. We got the best that. pizza. That, okay? Ex, ex Johnny Gioelli. You know Johnny? Yeah. He's from Queens, too. But I'll tell you, we make cook? the best pizza. Does he cook? No. I cook. You and cook? you got to remember... It's not Sunday gravy. It's Sunday sauce. It's sauce. Sauce. It's the pie. You want a pie? Let's go and get a pie. <laughs> First time we go, what's a pie? Like a cherry pie or something? You know the one, right? Yeah. It's the pie. fuck is that? Forget about it. That's the way. It. That's the way a karma. Uh, Vinny talks all the time like that. Well, Vinny's from Brooklyn. Yeah, he talks like that all the time. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna tell you the joke that Vinny told me when he came on the show. It's kind of corny, but it's funny. Yeah. He comes on. He goes. He goes, what does what does Brooklyn and pantyhose have in common? I don't know. Flatbush. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty. That's pretty. That is pretty. Vinny. Vinny's yeah. a funny I play I, I do some stuff with him. He's a funny. I love I love Queen's pizza. Joyce Roselli said. Meanwhile, she's from Masmouth Queen. She knows pizza. Pizza, okay. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, people, if you're listening to this right now, when I come to New York to do a show, anything uh, nearby. Bring me the best pie you can, you think is. I mean, no. What? What I'm going to do is if you come to New York, I'm going to meet you and I'm going to take you to the best pizzeria. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Guaranteed. On me. On me. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yes. 
And, and then you then you tell me. You're going to say, Ralph is right. He knows pizza. Forget about it. <laughs> and now uh, he tells me, look, Dan says that Terry's next album title should be called Connecticut Pizza. <laughs> He's, dude, Dan, I'm telling you, Bobby Piper told me that the best pizza is at a place in Connecticut, like a little shit in the hole, like a little place called, I forgot the name of that place. but Forget uh, about it. Yeah, what I, he said it's the best pizza. Uh, all, all the old timers used to go there and everything. And I went there, and I got to tell you, it was pretty good. Is it better than Domino's Pizza? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> they're, 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 they're laughing. Everybody's laughing. They're laughing at your accent, Terry. Not not your French accent, your French Italian accent. <laughs> hey, Nuzo, how are you doing, man? How are you doing, Nuzo? <laughs> Forget about it. Anyway, I want to thank. Mr. Terry Luce for coming on. It's been great. He's really one of the nice guys in rock. Let's all support him. I wish you nothing but continued success, health, wealth, and happiness, Terry. You're part of the Rock Shop family now. You can come back anytime you want, brother. Thank and you, I buddy. wish you nothing but the best. And mm -hmm. go to his website, www. I have the link on the bottom. See it scrolling across, terryeluce.com. Also, you can go to xyzofficial.com for the XYZ tour dates and merch. We got to support him. Remember, buy the album. Don't go to YouTube. Buy the album. Forget about it. All right, brother. You take care. Take care, Thanks, everybody. Terry. Great. Bye. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to send you a message, Terry. Okay. Next. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Bye.